course. Now, the, the solar disk is the largest as the biggest. Would that be the reason why the celebration in ancient Egypt took place thousands of years ago and the ancient Egyptian called it the Big Ra feast? The feast of the Big Ra, the feast of the Big Sun, because today he has seen the sun on its biggest, because the closest. Mm -hmm. So he is celebrating Ra on its biggest form. Between the two pylons, the primeval hills of creation, all of this as collected ideas, studies, concepts, religious and cults, festivals and feasts taking place today and in June as well. There will be another festivity in ancient Egypt. Now, by doing all of this, you are kind of, if you like, baptizing the whole temple. But this time it's not baptizing by water, it's baptizing by the sun rays. So the sun rays will go through this alignment perpendicular, as you mentioned, and it is going to go through the main vestibule from the Holy of Holies, which is always at the end of the temple, mm -hmm. and like Abu Sombol, Abu Sombol with the four statues, uh, Holy of Holies, that's the holiest, if you like, chamber in the whole temple. You can build a huge temple, I don't care, but if there is no Holy of Holies, the temple is going to be useless. Mm -hmm. So there must be a Holy of Holies in every temple in ancient Egypt. So from there, the Holy of Holies, and it will go all the way to the west. It will travel. And the sun in ancient Egypt travels. It travels on a boat. Hence, sun boats. Oh. Hence, the solar boat. Why? Because it takes the solar disk in a journey. And you will do the same journey with the sun. You will be in one with that journey. And you will have that journey for 24 hours. In ancient Egypt, you will be on a boat. And as a matter of fact, they divided the ancient Egyptian People divided, the priests divided that day into 12 hours of the day and 12 hours of the night. They divided it perfectly. Perfectly and precisely because the 12 days of the light, if you like, and the 12 days of darkness or the 12 hours of darkness rather. What's going to happen? What is this? What is this division of the day into 24 hours and dividing it precisely 12 and 12? Mm -hmm. What, they had a clock? Yes, they did. They had a water clock. And there is something called the Karnak water clock. What and is it, that? Was a it was a bucket formed in alabaster stone with designs and holes and everything. And by the water pouring and by the reflection of the sun on the surface and the moon, they will calculate times. It's in the Egyptian museum. Genius. Genius. <laughs> now, is that ringing a bell to us, dividing the day precisely into 12 hours and 12 hours? Remember the other phenomena. If today was the solstice, but remember the other amazing phenomena called equinox. The equinox is something that is studied everywhere in the world. Any observatory will study equinox. Equinox, equal night. Equinox, another Latin expression. Mm -hmm. But the equinox, we have the autumn equinox. We have the spring equinox. And the equinox is when the day is 12 hours and 12 hours. The ancient Egyptian knew the equinox. They knew it before anyone else. <laughs> exactly. They knew a lot of things before anyone else. <laughs> exactly. So by dividing that, they interpret that religiously. That's the important thing. There's always in the temples, things are interpreted from the cult point of view. Interesting thing is that you change boats. According to the texts of ancient Egypt, you change boats in that journey. There is a special boat for the light. And there is a special boat for darkness, of course, because you have to be equipped here. One called Mesectet in hieroglyphs, a boat called Mesectet, and another boat called Ma'injet. Ma, Ma'injet. Ma in hieroglyphs is with, okay. which is the same word in Arabic, right? Mm -hmm. When you say Ma somebody, is with right. somebody. In ancient Egypt, Ma'indet, Ma, Ma'injet. Ma'injet means the light, with light. This, this is the boat which is going to be used in the 12 hours of the light. Mesectet, I always refer it to seket, seket, silence, darkness. So it also mesectet, refers to Arabic now. You know what I mean? It's like I'm trying to make that relation. So mesectet is going to be the boat that you are going to use in the 12 hours of the night. Once you reach the last hour, that is the end of your journey. And now you are ready for your afterlife. But of course, that journey that the sun is doing with you it's not just an easy picnic that you are going having <laughs> suntan all the way, right? I don't know, the drinking cocktails. Of course not. 
there will be gates that you have to go through. And every gate, there will be bad souls. And there will be evil souls. And there will be evil characters trying to stop you from going on through your journey. Now, who's going to protect you? Who's going to take care of you in every gate of those gates that you have to go through? There will be support given to you. If you're a good person, you will be having support. You will be given weapons. You will be given characters that defend you. It will be, you will be given religious magical spells that will help you to go through. And that's why all those magical spells of the so-called Book of the Dead, which is the spells which takes you to the light of the day tomorrow. So that, to take you to the afterlife, you have to use spells. Mm -hmm. And hence, all those spells that you see uh, uh, carved on walls of tombs and, and places. Why? Why all those texts? Why? What was it doing in the tomb? Well, it's helping you to go through those gates until you reach the afterlife. Once you reach the afterlife and going through the day of judgment, in the day of judgment you decide. Well, you are now going to be in the day of judgment. A huge hole and your heart will be weighed with the feather of truth. We'll see your heart. Is your heart full of good things or your heart is full of bad things? And accordingly, the feather of truth will decide and the deities around will decide. And you will try to prove to them that I was a clean person. I am Tahir, I am clean. Mm -hmm. We are going to kind of repeat that four times. Four times you are going to repeat, I'm clean, I'm clean, I'm pure, I'm pure. I didn't do anything wrong. And then you are going to face yourself with 42 judges, 42 deities. And in front of every deity, you'll have to stop and say, no, I did not commit so and so. So 42 no's, if you like. We call it the negative confession. You're going to confess by no. You're going to say, no, I did not steal. No, I did not uh, cheat in the balance and the weighing of things. Mm -hmm. No, I did not hit my animals. I did not beat my animals, my pet animals and my animals. I did not beat my cow. I didn't beat my, uh, my donkey, uh, my mule. Hmm? No, I did not get drunk. That's one of the 42 things. Uh, here, we are getting into Christmas and New Year's Eve. <laughs> Remember this, guys. It's interesting, though, because uh, didn't the ancient Egyptians drink and they well, were the inventors hmm? of wine? You see? I mean. See? And other, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So other things, this, this must be proving to us that drinking was totally wrong in the ancient Egyptian society. But, as you mentioned, it would be considered wrong in other societies today, and people, some people will still do it. Maybe they used it for festivities, and, during festivities. Well, I mean, <laughs> hentet, you know, I mean, <laughs> is the hieroglyphic word for beer, but also it could be beer which is like from barley and from wheat, which is not alcoholic beer, and it could be also fermented and led to, as you said, wine uh, from grapes. And uh, we have an advice of a man to his son, uh, telling him that I see that you are going to the bar a lot and you are leaving your studies. So we know that this son wow. was, uh, he was getting out of the flock, you know, but his father was like, you are leaving your studies and you're going to the bar. He actually mentioned that in ancient Egyptian script. So yes, in every society there is the good and the bad. There is the person who's the outcast, the person who's not wanting to follow uh, uh, the, the, the system that you put uh, as a religious system. Same thing in ancient Egypt. because that History was, repeats itself. Oh yes, oh yes, oh I will say to you 150% I agree with you with that. By, by numbers. I mean, history repeats itself by numbers as well. So finally, what so we this saw... So this was actually, this was the belief that they, uh, I mean, that was widely spread in ancient Egypt. And was, was this in any way uh, represented or focused on during this uh, festivity and during this event of Al Karnak temples? <laughs> temples, well said, well said. Well, temples were temples. I, by me saying that, I mean priests, Kings, royal people of the court, courtiers, ladies, royal ladies will be performing such events, if you like. The people, yourself and I, would be outside the temple. There would be some festivities that we'll participate in, some public festivities. But there is also the private festivities, which the people, and most of them were like that, the people are not going to be allowed inside the temple. Mm -hmm. In ancient Egypt, people were not allowed inside temples. This is all happening out. If you are wanting to watch, you are watching from outside. Inside, there is something very mysterious taking place, and it was kept mysterious. It was kept ambiguous. And I think maybe the priests used that kind of mystery thing happening inside there to also dictate what they want. Mm -hmm. Because the more the mysterious, 
the more people, the more the people are bound will be, to believe. Uh, be, be, yeah, and impressed and everything. So it seems that that was the game of the priests at that time. Um, anyway, uh, if we are going back, you see, that is a gate here. Um, we can take a look at this gate. Uh, 